So let's get into the weeds with the uh, Pardot API logins and, and why they can fail even though you're convinced that you have the logins correct. And also the uh, Persian silk tree, also called a mimosa along with a bunch of other vaguely similar looking plants. So you're trying to use the Pardot API and it just fails and you don't know why. You've got the username right, you've got the password right, you've got that API key right. Gone back a couple times, you double checked it, you're sure that it's right. And it still just refuses to log in. What we're probably looking at in that case is the user can't actually use the API even though we think it should. If we look at a user, we get the that API user key. Obviously, it looks a little bit differently than this, but I modified this so we don't have to worry about any data security issues. And uh, it should just work. It's got the admin rights or marketing user rights, and it just works. One thing we look at is we are connected to the CRM, right? And then the other thing we can probably notice is this phrase right here, Salesforce connector last updated by salesforce connector what this is going to tell us is that this user was created by the user sync functionality within the salesforce connector and users synced in this fashion cannot use the api even though an api user key is generated for them it just won't work uh, the only type of user, Pardot user, that can use the API is one that's created within Pardot first. And then we can connect to a particular user, enable user sync. But it has to be a Pardot first user. And our hint is this updated by Salesforce connector. And that will tell us that uh, we're, we're not going to be able to use the API with this user. I would recommend having a API only user that you create special for every API connection that you have. This gives you the ability to see what the API um, is changing in, in your data because you'll see, you know, uh, edited by, last modified by, and it'll say the, the name of the user. And if every API connection has its own user, you can very clearly see what uh, API connected tool is using modifying the data. Um, it also gives you the ability to remote shut down the API connection um, just by going in and, and modifying the user, changing the, the login password or turning, you know, deleting it so it's turned off. Uh, that way, you know, if it's the weekend and, and you can't get a hold of whoever is in charge of this particular API tool. Uh, you could just go in and just shut it off um, from within part on. Uh, the other thing we probably want to notice is the time zone for an API connected user should always be Atlanta time. Uh, there was a bug, I don't know if it still exists or not, with the API user where it will grab data uh, for a 24 hour period. And then it will, uh, out of Atlanta, because that's the time that the, the server is configured. And then if we have a time like this, Chicago, it will then recalculate, get the data, and then recalculate to the new time zone. So we'll end up clipping an hour of data out of the out of what's returned to us because it'll, it, in effect, get double filtered. Um, just another extra moving piece. But, um, yeah, so that's... Uh, that's probably why the API isn't able to log in with a nice, helpful, friendly message like login failed, even though you're convinced you have the login uh, credentials correct. It's this uh, the way that the user was created. So get a new uh, API specific login created because uh, part out user logins are free. It doesn't cost us. We don't have to burn Salesforce licenses or anything like that. Um, I would also recommend having this license, this login not connected to Salesforce, uh, just to better partition the data. And uh, that will be 
details, getting in the weeds on logged in login failures, and also this really pretty pink Persian silk tree flower, which is a terrible noxious weed.